Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have a review of the novelization of the book Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, by J.M. Dillard. Uh, the uh, screenplay was by uh, David Lowery, and the story was by William Shatner, Harv Bennett, and David Lowery. So, um, uh... I have read several of the uh, novelizations for Star Trek. I'm a big Star Trek fan. Um, I have read some of them. I'll, I'll present them to you in the order that I read them. Um, uh, so I read the Star Trek VI Undiscovered Country, which I think is the best Star Trek movie. It's not my favorite. My favorite is four, uh, the one with the whales, uh, Voyage Home. But this one is, uh, I think, the best uh, movie. And this novelization was superb. It added... So much, so much to the story. And I, I, I love the movie even more after reading it. Uh, also by J.M. Dillard, by the way. I also read The Search for Spock by Vonda M. McIntyre. Uh, N. McIntyre, to say. And this is, I think, the best novelization I've read for Star Trek thus far. Added so much for the movie. I think the movie's a great movie. This book makes it elevate to another level that I loved even more. Like, there's so much additional content in this book that I just, it was so delightful and so great to read it. Then I read the Wrath of Khan novelization, which, I'll be honest, I think it's a great movie. But it doesn't add that much to it, unfortunately. Um, uh, it's not... I, I won't say it's particularly bad, but novelization has to both be true to the original movie and also make it worth your while to pick it up to read. And this really doesn't add enough for me, at least. Then you have the Star Trek The Motion Picture book. Now, this one adds quite a bit, and it does make me appreciate the movie more, but there's so many times in this... Uh, and I love the, mo the movie score for this movie. is my favorite movie score for Star Trek. But um, the movie itself, I think, is pretty lackluster. It's not the worst, but it's lackluster. And I just I just don't enjoy uh, the, the overall process. And this book makes the movie better. It does make the movie better. But there's so many problems with the way Gene Roddenberry adapted this that I just don't like. So... That's that one. And it is falling apart because these are old copies. And then, uh, most recently, of course, I just finished The Final Frontier. And this is my book review for Final Frontier. I say The Final Frontier because there is a Star Trek novel that released one year before this called Final Frontier by Diane Carey, which I own somewhere in my bookshelves and I intend to read eventually, so don't want to get confusing there. But this book, um, uh, I'm really... Uh, Ex, uh, excited to talk about it because I have such interesting thoughts on it. First of all, Jam Dillard is a masterful adapter. She does a great job of taking a story and adding to it. The problem is, this is such a bad story, such a bad movie, and then the story for the movie is so bad that even J.M. Dillard can't make it better. And I don't like to bash movies or bash books too much, so I won't spend too long on the movie, but the whole sequence of uh, going through the Great Barrier just does not work for me on so many levels. The whole sequence of what would God need for with a starship, while being true to the essence of Star Trek, just is not entertaining storytelling and is quite offensive to religious people in some ways. And then that, that whole sequence, not just the, not the line, the line I think is hilarious, but the whole sequence there. And then also the idea that William Shatner and the rest of the team writing this movie decide, and of course, if there's going to be spoilers because this movie is like 30 years old, so there's spoilers. William Shatner and the crew here decides to just create a half-brother for Spock that Spock's never mentioned in a single novel or comic or anything or, or anything else. He's never mentioned it. He's never thought of it. Uh, that is like the cardinal rule of, of franchise work or tie-in work is you do not make an unknown family member, especially siblings. Now, you can be like a child you've never met yet. That's fine. That's what they did that in Picard. That's a new child he hadn't met yet. That one works. Or even in Star Trek II, um, uh, Wrath of Khan, when Kirk has a younger brother. I mean, sorry, a young son, sorry. A young, a young son. 
that works really well here because when you have a child, it's 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 a bit different. But when it's like a sibling or a, or something else, it just it's the cardinal rule of of specifically media tie-in fiction, but franchises in general that you don't just be like, oh yeah, I've had this brother that I've never mentioned for for so long. It's just, you just don't do that. And that's one reason that doesn't work for me. And then the action sequences in here just don't do it for me. So what this book, let's talk about the novel. So I'm done bashing the movie. Let's talk about what the novelization does. The novelization follows the story of the movie. It adds a little bit to the character of Ja'on, or I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't even remember any of the pronunciations ever, even though I've watched the movie before. I've watched it one and a half times. Um, I don't want to watch it again. Uh, You have the character of Ja'on, uh, the character who's helping out uh, Cybok at the beginning, uh, and really throughout the whole whole story, but he really has a lot of extra scenes at the beginning of the story. And then also, when Cybok is going around brainwashing everyone, when he touches someone, you go inside their perspective and see how the brainwashing is happening, and you see what their reaction is and where their mind goes and things like that. And you see Sulu and Scotty and... Um, I check off and you see all of them go in their uh, each individual unique places. And I really appreciated that J.M. Diller did this because it makes this more interesting of a story. It make a full cast because in the movies, specifically this one, but in all the movies, they tended to just make it about the big three, about Kirk, Spock and McCoy. And they forgot about the rest of the cast. This does it in such a way that they're all a very important part of it. So, uh, I thought that that was fine. Um, the fact that the star sh- that the that the Enterprise is just not working ever is just kind of a frustrating trope because it's this new off the line ship that should be like the best of the best, and also it's it's just it just it just doesn't fit with the trip typical Trek aesthetic. Um, uh, when when stuff malfunctions in Star Trek, there's a specific reason for it, and it seems like a lot of the malfunctions here were just to have it be you have your characters frustrated so overall i don't blame jm dillard and in fact i understand why they gave her every other movie novelization for from star trek 6 all the way through star trek 10 and she earned it because star trek 6 is a superb novelization it adds so much and so i'm excited to read the rest of them but i just gotta say it just doesn't do enough for me um uh not too much value that it adds so i give it like a six out of ten it's fine, but it's not. It's not great. And the the movie story is way worse than that. I give the movie story like a two out of ten or a three out of ten. The novelization itself bumps it up, though. So that's my thoughts on the Final Frontier novelization. If you've read this book, what were your thoughts? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.